Today, and my name's Grant Dibden, and I'm the uh, chaplain uh, where Dan works. And it's wonderful to have you all here. And now, if you would all just be up standing now for the entrance of the bride and groom. We need to make room for him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we've come together in the sight of God for the joining in marriage of Dan and Roya. Our Lord Jesus Christ said of marriage that from the beginning of creation, God made the male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. So they no longer are two, but one. But therefore God is joined together, let not man separate. Marriage is a symbol of God's unending love for his people and of the union between Christ and his church. So St Paul teaches that the husband must love his wife as Christ loved the church. More carelessly, but with reverent and serious respect for the purposes for which it has been instituted by... It's good to give them a little rest. Surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not. Every other relationship that could possibly be made between two people, friendship, parent, child, must surpass all of these bonds in a whole vast way of remarkable things, such as the equality of partners, the permanent commitment, cohabitation in sexual relations. A marriage union is the union to end all unions. It's the ultimate in human intimacy. Marriage is really not a joining of two worlds, but an abandoning of two worlds in order that one new world might be formed together. And the key to a great marriage life to keep going at the flame. Let me encourage you, Roy and Dan, to keep working on that part of your marriage. But in Corinthians, it's a little bit like that. It's a beautiful picture of love, and it's it's something like what happens when you pass uh, light, white light, through a prism, and you get all the colours of the rainbow. This is patient love. That's what it's supposed to be in your marriage. We're to think of choosing to endure what we don't often want to endure even when our spouse should change. And we talk about love being kind. Not merely the kindness of a, a grandfather patting someone on the head, their little grandchild, or a mum kissing or scraping a, an elbow of a child or a cut finger. This is the kindness that we choose to relate to people. We can choose to overpower sometimes, to manipulate, to insist on our own way. But in kindness we choose to serve shower the person we are married with to overlook and she said well well to tell you the truth i never did get around to listing them but whenever my husband did something that made me hopping mad i would say to myself lucky for him that's one of the ten i'm going to forgive him see love protects whatever protects you love trusts the other person love has hope for the future love endures when misunderstanding and hurt never fails. Point. It's what real love looks like. And, and if I could just try and put that in positive terms for you, Dan and Roya. See, it's saying, we've come here to be joined in this holy union to which God has called us. To strive to live out the love for each other that I've just spoken about. That's good. <laughs> Nobody said anything. You haven't been invited. <laughs> <laughs> You have to and to hold from this day forward, for better or worse, for richer, for poorer, 
in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow and promise. This oh, yeah. ring I wed you, with all that I am, and all that I have, I love you, in the name of God, Amen. I'm with you. With all that I am. 